Bug Fables is the first game by the Panamanimani and Moonsprout games, which I find hard to believe considering the amazing degree of polish, the excellent writing, and the 30 plus hours of thoroughly enjoyable, often heartwarming, and occasionally surprisingly mature story. Join the honorable beetle Kabu, the greedy bee V, and the morbidly laissez faire moth leaf. <laughs> On their quest for the everlasting sapling, a single leaf of which is said to grant eternal life. If you like the first two Paper Mario games, stop watching this video right now, hit subscribe and go play Bug Fables. Turn on hard mode. It offers an incredibly satisfying challenge for veterans. If you haven't played the good Paper Marios, I guess I'll have to explain why you should pick this one up. It's basically a JRPG with action commands. That means, every time you attack, the game expects you to press certain buttons with the right timing. Do it properly and your attacks will deal extra damage and have additional effects. Whenever an enemy attacks you, press the block button just before the attack connects to reduce the damage you receive. These simple button prompts make every single battle more involved. You're never just watching bugs trade blows. Every encounter requires careful decision making as the strength of your enemies scales faster than your teams as the game progresses. Every character in the party has unique abilities and you'll have to combine them cleverly to beat even basic opponents. Kabu excels at damaging and knocking over enemies with high defense. V uses her boomerang to knock down flying targets and Leaf can unearth burrowing buggos and freeze fiendish foes with his ice magic. Why I turn everything into a tongue twister, I don't know. <laughs> As the game progresses, your party learns new techniques that they'll be able to use both in combat and while navigating the overworld. I won't spoil anything, so I'll make something up. This is entirely made up and not in the game. So imagine a story seeing the team trapped by a cave-in. Kabu realizes he can use his horn to pick up and throw boulders. Now you'll not only be able to remove a new type of obstacle while exploring, but Kabu can also use a boulder throw move in battle, stuff like that. It nicely connects the party's in and out of battle capabilities. It's a very satisfying bit of cohesion. The fact that the plot focuses on a small cast of characters gives the protagonists plenty of time to shine, and over the first few hours you're almost certain to fall in love with them. Throughout the main quest, there's plenty of well-written dialogue of both the light and heavy variety, and you'll find tons and tons of optional flavor text that expands on the lore and deepens your insight into the heads and hearts of our heroes. There's an entire quest entirely dedicated to explaining the surprisingly well-thought-out backstory, and it's well worth the effort. There's plenty of other side quests too. While some of them are unfortunately basic fetch quests, more than a few offer unique boss fights and rewards. Your party levels up as one. On each level up you can choose to increase your hit points, your teamwork points or your metal points. Teamwork points are used to perform special moves in battle. Metal points tie into the metal system. If you know the real Paper Mario games, medals are literally just badges. Medals are essentially pieces of equipment, each having a metal point requirement. Leveling up MP allows you to equip more medals, obviously. Low cost medals might increase a party member's resistance to status effects, medium cost medals will grant new abilities or have meaningful passive effects, and some high cost medals can completely change how a character behaves. Medals can be swapped out at any time while exploring, so make sure you experiment with different combinations to fit the situation. It's a thoroughly enjoyable system, allowing you to significantly customize your party while keeping their unique roles intact. There's a lot going- <laughs> she, wow. she turned quickly and ran her head into the wall. Oh no. And that's what she was yeah. Tiger, you clumsy. There's a lot going on in Bug Fables. The main quest offers a story that can be enjoyed by players of all ages. The characters are endearing and decently fleshed out. Hard mode offers one of the most rewarding challenges in recent memory. Gameplay may be simple enough for children, but the advanced tactics available to veterans should prove immensely satisfying. It's phenomenal, but admittedly unoriginal. The colorful bug-based high fantasy setting is a rare treat, but the gameplay is very much a carbon copy of the cardboard plumber. And that is not a bad thing. With Paper Mario and the Origami Killer looking less and less impressive with every frame Nintendo show, Buck Fables filled a hole in my soul I thought would remain forever. Buck Fables is available on PC and consoles.
don't overlook bug fables. Do you know of any games that didn't get the attention they deserve? Are you an indie developer and would like me to review your game in time for launch? Hit me up on Twitter or in the comments. If I like the game, I'll feature it. Like and subscribe. See you later, gamers. No!